You are getting near the end of your chemistry pace 1126. We're going to talk about just a few more concepts. Right now, let's look at freezing point depression. I want you to do a little experiment. Get a glass, <clears throat> put a little bit of water in the bottom, maybe a third of a glass, and then put as much ice in as will fit. <clears throat> Then I want you to get um, salt, not just table salt, but if your dad has some ice melter that he uses in the winter and you can get um, several tablespoons of that, I want you to dump that salt into that ice water mixture and then using a, a spoon or a knife even, just stir it around for um, two, three minutes. And then I want you to feel the glass. That's, that's, you may not feel it as much if you're using plastic or a mug, but if you use a glass, you'll notice that the outside of it gets frosty. And this is actually the principle of what happens when um, maybe your grandpa has a ice cream maker. He puts the ingredients in a container in the middle, a metal container, packs a lot of ice around it, and then you put salt. <clears throat> and they actually call it ice cream making salt. It's really just coarse salt. And what happens is the salt kind of dissolves into the ice and makes it harder for the ice to stay frozen. So the temperature kind of drops. Now your pace kind of explains it in a different way, but the idea is it kind of gets in the way of the particles um, of water being able to freeze. And so it has to get colder for the particles to freeze. So it literally lowers or depresses the freezing point of water. So normally water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. And uh, when we start adding um, <clears throat> ice melter to it, we can lower it to, you know, a few degrees below zero. So here's the formula that we use. Um, the change in temperature, change in freezing point temperature, and delta always means change in something. <clears throat> KF, K stands for constant, right? <laughs> and then we have the, uh, the F here means the freezing point constant. And you'll find that on table 6, 8 in your pace. Mainly we're going to use water. And uh, that constant is the number negative 1.86. Then the reason we studied molality is because we're going to apply it right here. So not molarity, but molality, and remember that's the number of moles per kilogram of solvent. Okay, there's some problems here on page S that I think uh, you can solve fairly easily. Let me help you get number 41 set up. If there's any on this page, it'll give you trouble. It, I'm guessing it's going to be number 41. So let's just take it to a certain point and then let you finish it. We notice in the original problem that we have 42.5 grams of silver nitrate. All right, so I wrote that down over here. Um, the molar mass, we look that up on the periodic table. So we add the mass of silver, nitrogen, and three oxygen, and we get 169.873. Seemed like we did that for another problem recently. So then to figure out how many moles we have, we're going to take the mass that's given divided by the number of grams in one mole. And that gives us 0 0.2501 um, moles. Then the solvent, it says that we have 250 grams of water. Well, there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. So we have one-fourth of a kilogram, or 0.25 kilograms. And remember the magic triangle here? To find the molality, we take the moles and divide by the um, kilograms of solvent. And I think you can see that's going to work out to be one, okay? <laughs> but I'll let you um, write the problem down and finish it. And then that answer, when you multiply that, is the number of degrees Celsius that it changes. Let me just quick um, help you set up these two problems. And uh, just a couple things I want to point out. Um, one is, 
Well, number 42, it says, what is the molal concentration? So that is the M. And it says a water solution. So that means we're going to use the 1.86. And then it gives us a freezing point of negative 8.52. And so that's the temperature. So basically, you have everything you need, and you're just solving for M. By the way, could we do the magic triangle for a problem like this? You know, actually you can, because anytime you have two things being multiplied together, you can put them together on the bottom, and then the other thing would be on the top. So that's just a little secret. If it makes it a little easier for you to solve, there you go. Because <clears throat> in this case, you're solving for M, which means you're going to take the change in temperature, the freezing, uh, the freezing point depression number right here, and divide by the constant. Let's talk about the last one here, 43. <clears throat> what is the freezing point depression of a 0.5 molar solution? Okay, so now we know what the molality is of a solute in acetic acid. Now we don't know the freezing point depression, that's what we're solving for, but notice it says in acetic acid. So you're going to need to look in your pace at table 6, 8, and then find the KF column, and there will be a number, <clears throat> and that will be the number that you'll plug in for KF, okay? So it's just a matter of looking it up on the table, plugging in, and then multiplying. As far as solving the problem, I don't think you'll find this too hard. These types of problems definitely are under checkup, and your self-test, and your pace test. So I do want you to feel <clears throat> comfortable and confident in solving these types of problems.